the other day I was doing this webinar on indexes and after the webinar was over, one of the attendees asked me a question around parameter sniffing. And I was like, wow, parameter sniffing again, because it's it's a very popular term. It's a very popular concept. And, and if you work with SQL Server, you probably would have heard about this at some point in time. And I was like, it's not easy to answer this question very quickly. And I wanted to keep the questions Q&A all focused on indexes. So I said that why not go to my SQL Maestro's YouTube channel or the video lobby on SQLMaestro's.com. And I was very confident that if you search on parameter sniffing keyword, you would find a video around it. But the attendee came back and said, oh, there was no video on parameter sniffing. And I was like so surprised that Till date, I have done so much around parameter sniffing, but never recorded a video around this topic, around this concept. So today we are going to have a look at parameter sniffing, a very quick guide, a very quick demo. And the best way to explain parameter sniffing is straight away jump into the demo. Now, before we go into the demo and I explain you this concept while I'm demoing, you got to know that this concept parameter sniffing has a lot of extensions to it, which means there are different permutations and combinations, couple of different solutions as well. And the latest versions of SQL Server has a few enhancements, new features around this topic. So yeah, so it's a very, very popular topic to work with. So let's look at a very quick demo and an easy fix, the most popular fix, so to say, and what is also recommended by Microsoft. So let's get started. I am using AdventureWorks 2016 here. Let's create a stored procedure uh, called get customer ship dates. And this has two parameters, the date start and date end. The body of the stored procedure is a simple select statement that will get you all the orders from sales order header between the start date and the end date. Let's go and create this stored procedure execute and it has two parameters date start and date end of course you need parameters to demonstrate parameter sniffing now we have the ship date in our where clause so let's go ahead and create a non-clustered index so that our query could be helped getting uh, to the data faster so we might expect that the optimizer will seek on this index so i'm creating a non-clustered index on ship date attribute of sales order header table Let's go and create the index job done. And now comes the fun part. So let's first free the procedure cache, dbcc free proc cache. Do not run such statement, uh, statements on production boxes. This is only for the purpose of demo and learning. So what I've done is cleared off all the plans from the procedure cache. And this is important. I'll explain that to you in a while. Now what we are going to run is execute the stored procedure with a variety of parameter values. The first execution where I am supplying the start date and the end date, have a look at this, just the year, if you just focus on the year, 2012 to 2016. So I'm kind of trying to get all the data from the last four years. So this probably could mean the whole table or maybe majority of records from the table. Let's go and execute this and execution plan is turned on. So we want to go and have a look at the execution plan. Now, once the execution is complete, take a look at the status bar out there. We have got about 28,000 records. The stable sales order header has about 31,000 records. So we're really getting more than 80% of the data. Now, if you jump over to the execution plan, you can clearly see, okay, SQL Server has deployed a clustered index scan here. Now you might be thinking, oh, we created the non-clustered index. So the optimizer has not seeked upon the index. Rightly so, because the optimizer has taken a cost based decision here and it knows from the virtue of statistics that you are trying to get a lot of data. It has that stats data and it knows that you're trying to get a lot of data. So it doesn't really make sense to go and seek on so many values and then do lookup. So more than 80% of the data, it's better to just go and scan the table. So clustered index scan here means that you are scanning the table. Now let's uh, go and run the 
stored procedure once again. Now this time I changed the parameter value. So if you see 2011 um, July 10 to 2011 July 20. So here we are only getting about 10 days of data. In the previous execution we got about 4 years of data and here we are getting about 10 days of data. So of course we expect the number of records to be much lesser. So let's go and execute this now and jump over to the execution plan and you and I would probably expect a seek here because now we are reading far fewer records. Have a look at the status bar there. We are only getting 57 records out of a total of 31,000 records. So tiny percentage. Let's go and jump over to the execution plan and we can see that SQL Server again chooses clustered index scan. Now, this time it is actually not deciding to choose clustered index scan or seek or anything for that matter because this plan is being reused. Now this is what you got to know because stored procedures are compiled objects and they encourage plan reuse. First time when you executed the stored procedure, which is the first execution, a brand new execution plan got created based on the parameter values. Now this is exactly what we talk about parameter sniffing. It sniffed the parameter values and it saw okay with the kind of parameter values that we have now start date and end date you're dealing with a lot of data. It creates a plan with clustered index scan access method and that execution plan gets injected into the plan cache and it remains there. Because we are dealing with stored procedures here, they are compiled object, they encourage plan reuse. Now subsequent executions of the stored procedure will reuse that plan which is available in the plan cache irrespective of the parameter values. Now what happens is in the second execution here, when the stored procedure comes with a different set of parameter values, it does not matter. Even if these parameter values would have been better off with uh, with an index seek, it will still go and reuse the scan plan, which is the clustered index scan. And this is exactly what we are seeing now. Now let's add some twist to it. And this is where you will you will you know kind of uh, face the heat and you will see where things go wrong. So let's free the proc cache again. Okay. And we are going to execute the stored procedure again two times, but this time we just flip the order. So I'm going to put this, the second one first and this first one second, which means in the first execution, I'm going to get only 10 days of data, those 57 records. Execution plan is turned on and now we have cleared of the plan cache, which means the, uh, there's no execution plan for this stored procedure. So let's go and execute this fresh new compilation and fresh new execution plan creation and optimizer has um, you know uh, all the opportunities to go and create a new plan and optimize it and find the best operators. So let's go and jump over to the execution plan and now you can clearly see for 57 records there have a look at the status bar there the optimizer decides to seek and this is the right decision. This is a cost based decision that the optimizer is taking, which is for 57 records, it's cost effective to go and seek those rather than go to the base table with 31,000 records and read all the data trying to find a match of 57 records. For additional columns, it deploys a key lookup because uh, this index is only on ship date and you're asking for other attributes. So it does a key lookup on the base table to fetch those additional columns. Now, one thing you have to note here is you are reading 57 records there. So for each record to get those additional attributes, there is a lookup there. So if you take the cursor over key lookup here, you will see number of executions. And this is important for you to note 57 times the execution plan here, the iterator is executed, which means 57 times we go and look up on the base table for those additional attributes. By the way, what are those additional attributes? So if you see the output list, you are getting customer ID, etc., which is fine. 
Okay, now comes the fun part. So what happens? This was the first execution after we cleared the plan cache. Now the seek plan gets injected into the plan cache. And now you're getting the sense of it. What is going to happen if we go and execute this one trying to get four years of data? And as I said before, all subsequent executions of the stored procedure will reuse the plan, which is there in the plan cache till the time it exists there. So the seek plan is there. Now we are going to execute this. Let's go and do that. And this is where it will hurt because if you jump over to the execution plan, first have a look at the status bar, you're getting 28,047 records and the execution is forced to use the seek plan because that's the plan which was existing and available in the plan cache and you are seeking but now things go really bad here because if you go and have a look at the key lookup thing here, look at the number of executions, 28,047 times we had to look up on the base table. And this is where things will start to hurt. In this particular simple demo, this simple example, I'm dealing with a small table. But if you just inflate the numbers, right? If you just scale it up and think about this being like, you know, 2.8 L or uh, 2.8 million or so, this is really going to hurt. The, the table here right now is small, just 30,000 records, but imagine if, if this was like 30 million records. This execution probably on, on a given hardware, like what we uh, what I have here with 16 GB RAM or 32 GB RAM would probably take a few minutes if we are doing so many lookups. So I hope you are getting the sense of where the problem is. And this entire thing that I demoed is called as parameter sniffing, where the optimizer sniffs the parameter values in the first execution and generates an optimized plan, an efficient plan based on those parameter values. And then subsequent executions are forced to use that same plan. So sometimes it might be good if the parameter values are conducive to the plan which already exists in the plan cache. But sometimes if the parameter values are not very friendly with what we have in the uh, execution plan, then things can go really bad. And that is the reason why stored procedures like this, as a, as a simple example here, sometimes will run really very quickly and you will like, wow, everything is fine. And sometimes they run very slow and then they start running good again. And you just don't know intermittently this problem keeps happening. So sometimes you have like perfect execution, sometimes you have slow execution and you're not able to figure out where is the problem. So with stored procedures in this scenario, the problem could lie, the root uh, bottleneck here could be with parameter sniffing. When friendly parameters come in, everything is all good, but when unfriendly parameter values come in, then things go bad. So, um, all good. So we have understood the concept. We have understood what parameter sniffing is and uh, what the problem is. What is an easy fix? So the couple of things that I've demoed in this script, like, you know, using the recompile with the stored procedure, and then we I've used even optimize for hint, etc. There are more ways. Uh, there are more solutions. And as I said, latest versions of SQL Server have a few more enhancements around this topic. But let's take a very simple solution, which is statement level recompilation. Your stored procedure might have multiple statements and not re not all statements might be suffering from this problem of parameter sniffing. So instead of recompiling the entire stored procedure, it makes sense that you can just use the recompile hint to recompile this specific statement. So what we are going to do is let's drop this stored procedure and the index still exists though and let's re recreate the stored procedure now with option recompile so let's do this and recreate the stored procedure with option recompile so option recompile here is going is telling sql server that every time this statement is executed it is going to be recompiled again which means if it is recompiled on every execution it can take whatever the parameter values are coming in with each execution, it can generate an optimized plan based on those parameter values. Unlike what you saw earlier when it was actually reusing a plan, but now there will be no plan to reuse and it's going to be uh, generated each 
on each execution. So let's go and uh, run this once more. So we are going to use, uh, we're running this uh, free proc statement once more. First execution, we're getting all the four years of data. Let's go and execute this. And this is what you expected, right? Which is scan. Now let's go and execute this one, which is just 10 days of data, 57 records. And remember in the earlier execution, this was actually bringing in the same plan, which is the scan plan. But now let's go and execute this. Recompilation has happened. So let's go and jump over to the execution plan. And yes, you get a seek now, which is the optimized plan based on these parameter values and likewise and and now i mean running this again doesn't make really sense because every time it's going to be recompiled so if i'm going to execute this one first now let's go and execute this 10 days of data 57 records you get a seek and let's go and execute this which is like four years of data all 28,000 records sql server will give you a scan plan on each execution the statement is being recompiled so you get the best optimized plan for those specific parameters that are coming in. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, oh, each time we are recompiling and we are compiling. So this is adding extra CPU pressure, extra CPU cycles. You're not wrong. Yes, that's happening. And that's really the trade off because uh, I mean, uh, some sometimes with a concept like parameter sniffing, uh, there's no free lunch. So if you really want best execution each time, there is a trade off. So there is a bit of sacrifice in some areas and there is performance improvement in other areas. And as I said, this topic and this concept is much bigger than this sh short demo. The purpose of this demo was only to give you a very quick explanation on what the concept is, what the problem is and what could be an easy fix, easy solution, which is using the option recompile. But the story is a lot more than what we have discussed. But I hope this is a good starter. At least you know what parameter sniffing is and you know an easy fix to this problem. Hope you enjoyed the video. Happy sequel. If you like the content, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon so that you're notified on new videos. Most importantly, visit sqlmaestros.com. There's a lot of SQL learning resources out there. Video courses, master classes, lab kits, ebooks, blogs, hands-on labs, and a lot more. Follow us on Twitter, at the rate SQL Maestros, and myself, A underscore Bunsel. Last but not the least, do subscribe to our newsletters. See you soon in another video. Goodbye.